In this video, I'm going to cover Max Fabrics governance features like endorsements, tags, sensitivity labels, and lineage views. So, if you want to learn more about those, stay tuned. Welcome to the video. My name is Alexia, and on this channel, I cover Microsoft Data Platform related topics. In this video, we will continue our DP700 exam prep series, and a link to the entire playlist can be found in the description. This is the episode 20 in the DP700 exam prep series, and in this episode we will cover governance features that are in the scope of DP700 exam that we have not yet covered in this series, like item endorsements, tags, sensitivity labels, and lineage views. Like in every episode in this series, we will first start with the theory section, followed by demo slash tutorials on Fabric, and then we end the episode with few questions related to topics covered in this episode, so that you can test your knowledge. But now, let's get started. Let's first start by talking about endorsing items. When you work with a lot of data and reports, it can be hard to know which ones you can trust. This is where endorsements can help. There are three different types of endorsements in Max Fabric that can be given. Those are promoted, certified, and master data. And now, let's break down each one of them to understand what those mean. First, we have the promoted endorsement. This is the most unofficial out of these three, since this is just for highlighting that specific item, which means that that item is seen as a valuable asset and the person who has promoted it recommends it for others to use. This promoted endorsement doesn't really require any special permissions to be applied, and people who have right level permissions to a specific item can add promoted endorsement to it. This is the only endorsement option that is available for all fabric users by default. So basically, the point of this endorsement is just to encourage the collaborative use and spread of content within an organization. Next, we have certified endorsement. This is a step up from the promoted endorsement, and it means that the item meets the organizational quality standards. And what these quality standards mean in practice? Well, each organization has to come up with their own rules what they consider as certified content. However, it could be said that when item has been certified, it is typically regarded as reliable, authoritative, and ready to use for across the organization. What comes to the permissions, this endorsement is not available for everybody to use by default, and Fabric admins can manage the certification process to meet the organizational needs and specify who is able to certify items. Lastly, we have the master data endorsement. If an item has been labeled as master data, that means that the item is regarded by the organization as being core, single source of truth data, such as customer list or product codes. But like with the certification process, you have to make your own rules how to use this master data endorsement. Also, like with the certified endorsement, fabric admins can control this master data process and who can approve items to have this endorsement. And here we can see how this endorsement look in the workspace item list. Also, it is good to note that given item can have only one of these endorsements. So for example, you can't have items that have promoted and certified endorsements at the same time. Another good thing to know is that master data endorsement can be only applied to specific items that contain data, like lake houses and semantic models. Since it wouldn't make any sense to label, for example, a data pipeline or a data flow as master data, since those items don't contain any data and they just move and transform it. On the other hand, promoted and certified endorsement can be added to all Fabric and Power BI items except Power BI dashboards. Now let's talk about tagging items in Max Fabric. Tags are like custom labels that you can add to fabric items. They help you to keep things organized and easy to find. So basically, tags are just some configurable text labels that can be applied to different items. And in those example pictures, we can see that bronze and finance tags have been applied to that lake house. The purpose of tags is to enhance data categorization, organization, and discoverability. And you can, for example, filter items based on the tags that have been applied to it. What comes to the permissions related to tags, only fabric admins can create, rename, or delete them. But after those tags have been created in the admin portal, any user with right permissions to an item can apply and remove tags. There are a few limitations that are nice to know about tags, and those are that the maximum of 10,000 tags can be created, and each item can have up to 10 tags. 
and it is good to know that all tag related actions can be performed programmatically via Fabric Admin REST APIs. So if you want to do some tag related automation, the capabilities are already there. Next, we have sensitivity labels that can be also applied to different fabric items. Sensitivity labels help you to classify and protect your fabric items and data. They can apply things like encryption, watermarks and usage restrictions, especially when content is exported outside of fabric, like to an Excel or a PDF file. These labels are created and managed in Microsoft Purview, which is part of Microsoft Data Governance Tools, which means that you cannot create new labels inside Fabric. You can only apply the sensitivity labels made by the people who manage your Microsoft Purview. What comes to the permissions related to sensitivity labels? In order to use them, your Fabric admin must first enable the feature in the admin portal. Also, you need specific licenses like Microsoft Purview Information Protection in order to make and have these sensitivity labels in Fabric. So if you don't have those, you can't even start to use this feature. If you meet all the requirements for using sensitivity labels and your admin has enabled them, then you can apply them to items you have right permissions to. So in that way, they are very similar to tags and endorsements that we covered previously. In the screenshot, you can see a label called confidential that has been applied to a lake house. It also says that this label has been automatically applied to downstream items. This means if you create a data set or a report from this lake house, they will also get that same label since they are using data from this item that has been defined as confidential. This is an optional setting that can be turned on or off from the admin portal. Now let's take a quick look at the workspace lineage view in Moxed Fabric. This view shows you a visual map how different fabric items in your workspace are connected to each other. For example, in this screenshot, we can see that data flows from Azure Data Lake storage into a lake house, and then from that lake house, it is being used by different fabric items like notebooks. To open the lineage view, you just click the lineage icon in top right corner of your workspace. Lineage is useful because it helps you to understand dependencies. You can quickly see where data is coming from, how it moves through the notebooks or pipelines, and where it ends up. This is especially helpful when you are debugging, doing impact analysis, or working with a larger team. So Lineage is just not a nice diagram, it gives you a clear end-to-end -end view of your data flow. Then we can also open item lineage view for individual items. This view is very similar to the workspace lineage view, but now the scope is an item rather than the entire workspace. This view is also helpful for identifying dependencies and do some impact analysis for the item. Next, let's go to Fabric and do a demo slash tutorial about these topics together. Before we open Fabric, I would like to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more DP700 and Fabric content. This doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. Also, if you'd like to support the channel with a cup of coffee, you can do so by clicking the buy me a coffee link that can be found in the description. But now let's go to Fabric. Now we're in Fabric and I have my DP700 example workspace open here. Let's start by discussing endorsements. I have this lake house here that we have been using in this tutorial series here. Let's open this and let's open settings for it. And here we can see this endorsement tab. And here we can see those endorsement options that we just talked about in the theory section. So that by clicking here, we could, for example, promote this item or certify this item or label this as master data. And of course, I can only do these certified and master data endorsements because I have the right permissions for do them. But all the users should have already the permissions to promote items if they have the right permissions to them. And in the admin portal, we can control things related to these certified and master data options. And here in the fabric admin portal, we can check out some settings for this kind of a certified endorsement. First, we have this certification and we can enable it here for the organization. And I have already enabled this for my tenant. And here we have also these options to specify this custom documentation URL and how this URL would be actually used. Well, when we have this certified and master data endorsements here, we have this link 
beneath them. If a user will click this link, it will take you to this Microsoft Learn documentation. But if we specify a custom URL here, that link will actually take you to the custom page. And on that page, we could have some information about the certification and master data processes in our organization. But for now, I don't have any custom URLs to specify here. But basically, we could specify any URL we want here. Then we have this other important setting here, make certified content discoverable. And what this setting means that if we have turned this setting on, the users can see certified content in their fabric portal, but they are not able to access it. But if they see it, they are able to request permissions to that certified content. So basically this setting will make your data more discoverable in your organization. For example, if you have this customer data set that has been certified by your organization, users can see it after you have turned this setting on. And if they think that they need access to that customer data set, they can request access to it. But like I said, this doesn't give the permission to access that data set automatically. It just makes it more discoverable by the users. Then in the admin portal, we have also this separate setting for turning on the master data endorsement. But remember that this endorsement can be only given to some specific items that are data store, like lake houses, for example. And now just to play around with this feature, we can turn master data endorsement on for this lake house. But remember that in the real world scenario, this wouldn't be probably this easy and you would need to have some type of review process before some item could be labeled as master data or certified, but promoted every user could add. But yeah, let's add that master data endorsement there. And now we can see here in the workspace UI that we have this master data label here. So in this endorsement column, we can see items that have been endorsed in this workspace. And then if we, for example, open up this event stream here and then add a promoted certification here, we can see that we don't have master data endorsement here available because this event stream is not a data store. But yeah, we can close this with the promoted endorsement. And now we can see that that event stream is promoted. And next, let's go back to the admin portal and let's talk about tags. Here in the admin portal, we can see this separate tab for tags. And here I have actually created a bunch of tags. So I have created this finance, HR, bronze, gold and silver tags. And here we would be able to create more tags. And remember, like I explained in the theory section, these tags could be actually created and managed also programmatically via Fabric Admin REST APIs. But yeah, now I have created a bunch of tags here. And remember that only Fabric Admins are able to create these tags here. But yeah, now we have a bunch of tags here and now we can go back to the workspace and open up these lake houses settings again. And here we can see another tab for tags. And here we can apply some tags to this lake house. For example, we can apply finance and bronze tags to this lake house. And now we have applied two tags here. And here in the workspace UI, we can see that some tags have been applied to this lake house and we can see these tags here. And the nice thing with tags is that we can filter items in our workspace using these tags. For example, if we want to filter out all the finance related items here, we can use these tags to label them and then use this filter to find them more easily. Also in the admin portal, we have a bunch of settings related to sensitivity labels. But unfortunately, my tenant that I'm using to record these videos doesn't meet the requirements to use those sensitivity labels because I don't have the right licenses in place. But here in the admin portal, you can find settings to enable the sensitivity labels so that you can add them to your items. But remember that sensitivity labels are not created in Fabric and they are created and managed in Microsoft Purview. That is a different tool, but it is a Microsoft data governance tool. So that is a good place to manage them organization wide. Because those sensitivity labels are actually not just Fabric specific and they can be applied to, for example, Excel files. Also in the theory section, we talked about this lineage view that can be opened here in the top right corner of our workspace. And here we can see the lineage for our workspace. And for example, here we can see that we have some data coming from Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, because a shortcut from that storage have been created to this lake house. And then data from that lake house is actually being used by multiple notebooks. And one of those notebooks is also ran in a pipeline. But yeah, this workspace 
Space Lineage view is great, for example, for doing some impact analysis. For example, if we are planning to change this lake house somehow, we can see what are the notebooks and pipelines that are using data from this lake house and then consider if our change will affect those. And also, like I showed in the theory section, we can open up this kind of a similar view for a specific item and a view item lineage. And here we can just see this lineage for a specific item. That is also good for doing that impact analysis, but in the scope of that item. Next, let's test your knowledge about the topics covered in this episode. But before we do that, I would like you to know about this website called certiace.com that I have created with few friends that offers free custom-made practice questions to certification exams like DP700, DP600 and DP900. So after watching this video, go check out certiace.com. But now let's have that practice question. Our question today is, which of the following statements about endorsements in Moxed Fabric is correct? A. Only fabric administrators can promote, certify and apply master data labels to any item in the workspace. B. Master data batches can be applied to any item including notebooks and dashboards, as long as they contain metadata. C. Certification requires the item to be promoted first and then approved by a workspace admin. D. You can add certified tag and master data endorsements at the same time to a lake house. Now think about the answer for a moment and pause the video. I will reveal the answer in 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is D. You can add certified tag and master data endorsement at the same time to a lake house. Well, this is a very tricky question, since here we are talking about certified tag and not certified endorsement. If we would be talking about certified endorsement, we wouldn't be able to add certified endorsement at the same time with master data endorsement, because we can only have one endorsement active for a given item at the time. But since we are talking about tag and we have this tag called certified, we can add that at the same time as master data endorsement. What comes to our incorrect options? A is incorrect, since fabric administrator role is not required for those operations. B is incorrect, since master data can be only applied to data stores and not items. Even though items would contain metadata, they are not still data stores and master data cannot be applied to them. And lastly, C is incorrect, because certification doesn't require item to be promoted first. And that is all that I wanted to cover here today. If you'd like to continue your learning journey towards getting that DP700 badge, check out the next video in this series. But now I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.